Good morning, Bethel. Happy Friday. It's chapel time. Uh, we're thinking and praying for each of you uh, during this season. Wanted to give you a few quick announcements this morning. Be keeping an eye out for these Friday emails. We want to communicate with you well uh, during this season. Keep an eye out for our virtual career fair coming up. Also, uh, emails regarding the housing that you're signing up for for next year. We also know there's been questions uh, regarding funds for housing from this semester, so keep an eye out for information on that. As we come to the end of the semester, traditionally we would be celebrating our Senior Showcase Chapel together, and this morning we're going to do so virtually. So uh, prepare your hearts. We're going to have Bethany Mullet leading us in worship. Kenzie and Kristen are Spiritual Life Directors uh, in a time of sharing with you, and you'll receive a blessing from our Stuco Student Body President, Paul Cook. We'll end our time together with a slideshow. Uh, again, seniors, congratulations, uh, praying as you finish up well, and we pray for this time this morning that we would enjoy it together. Blessings. We hope to see you all soon. Changes not thy compassion. 
Hey Bethel, it's Kenzie and Kristen, and we have had the privilege of serving as your spiritual life directors for the last academic year. And it's been one of the greatest honors. And we just wanted to start by saying thank you for the opportunity to serve, to lead, and to invest in each and every one of you. Absolutely. I want to echo that for sure. And as we're in this time of asking a lot of questions, and there's just kind of a lot of unknowns, and I'm sure you also have lots of questions. And Kenzie and I are both graduating seniors and have questions of our own. And something that's been encouraging to me over these last few weeks is that we're not the only ones that ask questions, that we actually find in God's word that Jesus and his ministry asked a lot of questions. And with that, we can look at specific instances of what Jesus said about that and what he says with those. Yeah, so we want to let you guys know that you have the authority and the ability to ask God every question that comes on to your heart. Um, but God also asks questions of us. And so that's what we're going to dive into a little bit. And the first question comes out of the Gospel of John in chapter 5. And it's the first, first 15 verses. And it's the story of a crippled man who for 38 years laid beside a healing pool in Bethesda. And one Sunday afternoon, Jesus walks in and asks this man who he knows has been there for a long time, do you want to be healed? And the man goes into a list of excuses as to why he isn't healed yet. And I just find that dialogue really interesting because I've seen that happen in my own life where God presents me with this opportunity to be healed and I just make excuses for the way that I am. I make excuses for my brokenness or for my sin. And I think God is really asking a lot of us in this time, do you want to be healed? Are you at a point in your life where you can recognize the brokenness in your own spirit and receive the healing that God has for you? Or are you going to hold on to your brokenness? Are you going to sit in the excuses that you've made for yourself a little bit longer because it's comfortable or because it's familiar? Because our prayer for each and every one of you and also for ourselves is that we would continuously be in a place where we receive the healing and the wholeness that God offers to us. And so the first question, the first challenge that we have for you guys is, where in your life is God offering you healing? Where is he offering you wholeness? And what's stopping you from reaching out and taking hold of that? And we see the second question that we want to look at in um, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18. Um, Jesus is walking, um, walking towards Jericho and sees a blind man, a blind beggar that's been sitting there. And he's calling out. He's trying to ask for help and he's kind of answering that question that Kenzie asked like do you want to get well this beggar is saying yes I I need healing I want to get better and Jesus comes walking by and and he he calls out and he says Jesus son of David have mercy on me he actually recognized who God was and Jesus does stop he he obviously hears his name and and is um is challenged by that and so then Jesus walks over to this blind man and he asks him a, a question and his question is, what do you want me to do for you? Before Jesus heals this man, he, he asks him a simple question out of compassion, out of gentleness. Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? He doesn't immediately heal him. He doesn't say, okay, you need to see go. He says, no, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man respond, responds, Lord, I want to see. He, he openly ask Jesus exactly what's on his heart. He's not afraid to ask for what he wants. And the same is true for you, friends. God wants us to ask. We want, he wants us to ask him what we need, what he wants us to do for him. Now that's a pretty wordy thing to say, but there's lots of places in scripture where we see that God does ask for that. We see in Matthew where he says, ask and you will ask and you'll receive, seek, and you will find, knock, and the door will be open to you. There's so many times where God says, my children, ask me. He wants, he wants to help us. He is a compassionate and loving God that wants to give us good things. Jesus says, how much does a, an earthly father give to you? How much more will your heavenly father, a perfect God, God wants to give you things, friends. He wants to give you, but it takes the humility. It takes vulnerability to say, Lord, I need your healing. I am at a place where I can't do this on my own. The blind beggar sitting there realizes that he can't see out of his own ambitions, out of his own gifts, 
anything he tries will fail. He knows that he needs the son of God to just heal him. And he does. It, we read in Luke chapter 18, verses 42, Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. And when all the people saw it, they also praised God. We live in a really self-sufficient world where we want to do it on our own. And I'm just as guilty of this as you are. And it's, we need to get to a point where we're able to say, God, I want to see. Mm -hmm. I want to see your goodness. I want to see what you're doing in my life. I want to see the healing that I need. So once we're able to, to answer the question of, do we want to get well, we need to say, we need to answer God's question of, what do you want me to do for you? He wants to do things for you, but we need to ask for it as well and to believe that he will do it. And only then will he do it. So not only that, but then also in Gospel of Mark, so we're working backwards for those of you following along in your Bibles. I want to see that in Mark chapter 6, Jesus asks another question. And this time, not to someone he heals, although there will be a miracle that we'll talk about, but he actually asks this to his disciples. In Mark chapter 6, they've been... Jesus has been talking for some time, and this might be a familiar passage to some of you, and they get hungry, just like me, and I'm sure you all get hungry at a point where after listening to a lot of classes, a lot of online lectures lately, you get hungry, and so you need to be fed, and so in Mark chapter 6, Jesus will feed a large crowd, and so it, um, so as we, just going to read part of it for you, um, Mark chapter 6, uh, beginning of verse 35. By this time it was late in the day, so his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said. It is already very late. Send the people away so they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But Jesus answered, you give them something to eat. They said to him, that would take eight months, eight months of a man's wages. Are we to go and spend that much on bread and give, give it to them to eat? How many loaves do you have? He asked go and see. And they found out they said five and two fish. So here they're trying to feed a whole crowd of people. And as Jesus is, he asks them, okay, it's, it's your job. You need to feed these people. And yet, so they, they say, well, that's going to be too much, Jesus. We can't, we can't do that. But he, he looks at them and says, well, what do you have? What have you already been given? What do you have? And so from there, they go out and collect and realize that they only have five loaves of bread and two fish. From there, Jesus feeds a whole crowd of people as we see. But first, this miracle of feeding 5,000 men plus women and children comes from what they're already been given. The miracle starts from the simple, ordinary bread and fish that people already had there. And I'm really interested in to see how the disciples responded. Because if Jesus asked me to feed a whole crowd of people and said, well, well, what do you have? I, you know, I'd be tempted to say, well, not enough to feed all this people, these peoples, or, well, I mean, aren't you the one that can do the miracle? Like, God, you do something. Like, I would be tempted to put it back on God. But instead, Jesus says, no, I want to use you. I want, the disciples played a role in this miracle that it was their obedience to go and collect what food there was left to then see that this whole crowd of people could be fed. That it started from the ordinary, just bread and fish. That's it. And from there, Jesus fed a whole crowd of people. He, um, Let's see. He says, and then taking the five loaves and two fish, Jesus looked up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves, and he gave them to his disciples to set before the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied. Satisfied. The disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces of bread and fish. So there were even leftovers, but really this question of what do you have, Jesus is asking, what have I already been given? What have you already been given to do a miraculous work. Everything that was needed for that was already there. Yes, Jesus multiplied it, and it is a miracle, and I'm not downplaying it at all, not saying that, but I'm saying that God has given us things already. 
to do a miracle. And as we find ourselves cooped up in our houses, maybe with our families, what seems like a very monotonous time for some, or very boring, maybe, maybe confusing, maybe more busy than before, but God has already given you lots to do a miracle. I think, you know, we're all sitting here asking for lots of different miracles. And like we looked at, it's good to ask God for things. And, but I also believe that he has given you a lot already. There are so many blessings each and every day that I miss that God provides for us. I miss the ones that he gives me. I want to be thankful and, and look at those. And I believe I see some, but I know I miss, I miss a lot because I'm not always answering the question of what do you have? God's given us things. And today he's asking you, what, what do you have? How can you bless those around you? How can you make most of what God's given you? He's asking, are you faithful and obedient to what I've put before you? This is good stuff. Really good stuff. Um, our final question comes out of Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 16. And just before this, uh, Jesus was warning the disciples about the leaven of the Pharisees, which is their doubt and their disbelief in who Jesus is. And as Jesus is traveling with the disciples to Caesarea Philippi, he looks at them and asks the question, who do others say that I am? Who do the people say that I am? And the disciples respond with, some say you are John the Baptist, others say you are Elijah, and still others say that you are Jeremiah, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And Jesus responds with, but who do you say I am? And Peter boldly steps out and says, you are Christ. You are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. And I think this question for me has really rattled my life over the last few days as I have just been meditating on this and asking myself this question, who do I say God is? Who do I say Jesus is? Who do I say the Holy Spirit is? And I think it's really easy in today's world to get caught up in other people's opinions or in other people's theology and to adopt it as our own and to say that, well, I believe this or I believe that without really taking into account our personal belief. It's easy just to say what other people have said before us because this can be an uncomfortable question to sit with um, because it takes a lot of soul searching. It takes a lot of knowing the scripture and being rooted in the truth in order to say, this is who God is to me. Um, but we wanna challenge you guys with that, not just to take what other people have already said before you, but in the coming weeks and in the coming months, you know, whether you're returning to Bethel in the fall or whether you're a senior and you're getting ready to move on, we are all gonna to come to a point in our lives where this question is going to be asked of us. Who do you say God is? Who is God to you? And I think it's one of the most important questions that we can ask ourselves because out of that comes the foundation of our relationship with the Father. And so we want to encourage you guys and we want to challenge you guys to sit with this question, to ask yourselves and to honestly answer it. And it's okay if that answer changes over time because it has for me. There were times in my life where God was a judge and there are times in my life where God was comfort and there have been more times than I can count where God has been friend, where he has been father, and where he has been so near and dear. And so it's okay if the answer changes over time, but we want you guys to be wrestling with it and to sit with this because it's pivotal. It was so important that the disciples understood who Jesus was because the Pharisees missed it completely. And that's devastating. That was devastating to the heart of the Father. And we don't want any of you to miss out on this question. We want you to know for yourselves who God is to you. These are some really challenging questions. And it's okay, like I said, if you don't know where you're at with any of them. But we want to ask again, are you at a point in your life where you recognize the brokenness and you want healing? If you are, we want to encourage you guys to reach out to someone that you know loves the Lord, someone that can help walk you through that process, because we don't want you to do it alone. We want you to have 
relationship. We want you to have friendship and we want you to be in community with other people who are going to encourage you and walk alongside you in that. Are you at a point in your life where you, where you feel like God's asking you, what do you want from him? Do you know how to answer that question? Do you know what you're looking for? Do you know what you need from the Father? If that's a hard question for you to sit with, wrestle because it's one of the most beneficial questions to realize what I actually need from God. Are you at a place in your life where you're ready to surrender, where God's asking you, what do you have? I'm talking to seniors specifically right now. This can be a trying and scary time. What do you have to give back to the Lord that he wants to use for the ministry of the kingdom? Because you have something, because each and every one of you have been gifted with a profound gift from God, and he wants to use you to benefit the kingdom. Maybe it's in your occupation. Maybe it's in ministry. Maybe it's in both. Whatever it is, seek it out and ask the Lord, how can you use this? How can you use what I already have? And then that last question, do you know who God is? Do you know how to answer the question, who do you say the Father is? Sit with it, dwell in it, because it's a question that's not ever going to go away. We love all of you, and we have been so incredibly blessed to serve you in this last year. Um, I walk away feeling so fulfilled and so satisfied because I see the way God moved on our campus, and I am excited and prayerful for what God is going to do in the future with all of us. Yeah, same here. I'm so thankful for this opportunity and I have gotten to know God on a deeper level by getting to know all of you. There's so much, I mean, we're all made in the image of God and there's so much of God's truth that is flowing through each and every one of you. And um, yeah, I just want to say it's been such a pleasure and um, just a blessing for me to serve you in that way and to learn so much mm -hmm. about myself, others, and, and God through this whole experience. And thank you so much for listening today. Um, hope this was an encouragement, but also a challenge. Um, just to close this out, I'm just going to pray for us. Um, so if you'd pray with me. Father, we thank you for who you are. We are thankful for the ability to ask questions that... <laughs> the the doubts and insecurities and just struggles that we have god that we don't have to just sit in those that we can proclaim them loudly to you but with that we know that you also ask questions of us god i just ask that you would open open our ears to receive those questions that you have for us today each of us find ourselves in a different place and you ask each of us different questions god thank you for meeting us where we are that you are not a God of, of discomfort. You're not a God of confusion, but you bring peace and comfort to those that delight in you. God, I just ask that we could delight in you today. Make yourself known to us. Continue to speak to us. Help us to reach out to those around to us and help us to be more aware of who you are in our lives. God, continue to ask us questions as we open our hearts to hear from you. We're so thankful for the loving spirit that you are and how you're moving in our lives. Bring each of us an ordinary miracle in our days today. It's in the Son's Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. We love you guys, and we are going to miss you like crazy. So be blessed. Know that we're praying for you, and if you need anything, please feel free to reach out to either one of us. Hello to all of you from afar. I know in this time things look differently than we were all expecting them to look, and I certainly wish as many of you do that we could all be together celebrating the graduating seniors. As a graduating senior myself, I have great respect for all of you. Um, I've been able to personally see some of the perseverance and the great job that you all have done. You have put in a great amount of hard work. You guys have all been flexible to the needs of your classes, to the needs of your dorms, and to the needs of your families over the last four years, and specifically in this last step of the chapter in college as we've been away with COVID. Um, yet you have pursued this mission with great perseverance that you set out to accomplish a few years ago. 
It's amazing and crazy to think that just a few short years ago, we came to Bethel in an effort to further ourselves and gain an education. For many of us, we had no idea what that was gonna look like. And for others, we had no idea how it was going to end. Um, but in this time, where we may be a little uncertain, I commend all of you for the hard work that you have put in. It has been an honor to stand by you and serve you as your student body president for the last two years. And I am honored to be able to call you all my graduating class of 2020. We are the first graduating class of Bethel University. Um, as you begin to get into your career shortly and begin another step in the chapter, um, maybe that's in your careers, maybe that's in higher ed like myself, I want to remind you to carry forth the same vigor and integrity and the same lessons that you learned while you were at Bethel. I am very proud of you all, and I hope each of you is blessed in your careers and whatever the next chapter of life has in store for you. Um, keep pushing forward, keep turning to God, keep furthering yourself, and keep furthering the kingdom.